All right, so I have a few things that I keep forgetting to say. Um, I'm just putting it off um, <clears throat> for a couple weeks, and I'm going to go ahead and just get this shit over with. So first off, I got a Twitter, and I got an Instagram. Um, both of the links are on my um, like my channel main page, but I'll also give them here. Um, my Twitter is Obi-Wan Fashobi, just one word. Um, and my Instagram is obi.wan.fashobi. Um, so you can go ahead and check those out, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. Those interfaces seem, they're just kind of strange to me. Um, they're new to me. So I'm, I'm really bad about updating my Twitter, especially because Twitter is fucking weird. And, um, my Instagram, I'm, I'm better at updating just because it's really easy to take pictures and just post them there. Um, but yeah, I, I've been working a fair amount. And so upkeeping, um, my Twitter and Instagram hasn't been super high on the priorities list. So I apologize. I'll probably be better about it in the future, but, um, at the moment, don't expect a whole lot. Of course I have my Tumblr. My Tumblr is just a whole bunch of random bullshit, but you're welcome to check that out too. It's, um, base goddess. Um, I think it's all one word or maybe it's not, I don't quite remember. Um, it's the, the link is on the, the main page, so you can see it there. So anyway, the other thing that I wanted to get into, um, <clears throat> this month is trans awareness month. And so I've been forgetting to make a video about this and I think this would be the best time. So, um, I want to talk about being non-binary because I feel like it's, um, I don't know, it goes along with trans awareness. So <sighs> this is going to be difficult for me to do, but I'll, I'll try my best to be at least coherent in in my thoughts, but I'm still working through a lot of this. And so I apologize if I sound like I have no goddamn sense. So first off, <clears throat> I was raised as a tomboy. And so, um, I don't know, it's a girl that follows both girl roles and guy roles. So yes, I am a fab, um, just in case you, you weren't aware. Um, that's assigned female at birth. And um, I identify as a gender, um, non-binary. So. I was raised as a tomboy, and so my parents weren't really super into raising me conventionally um, female. Um, they they weren't super, you know, into the the princess motif or whatever. And my parents are very, especially my mom. My mom is very, very, very fucking pragmatic, and my dad is he's just kind of there. He's he's along for the ride. Um, He's pretty much the fun parent. He, he likes to take us on vacations and stuff. And my mom is the, the non fun parent who likes to save money. And, you know, they balance each other out, I guess. I was raised to be, you know, a tomboy. And in that, I never really thought about gender ever, like at all. Um, I never thought of myself as a girl. Um, I was just, I've always just been me. Um, and so as I got older, I, I began to question gender and what it really meant to me. And so in, in middle school, you know, it's that it's fucking awkward times. Middle school is goddamn awful. Um, you lose a lot of friends. You, you don't necessarily gain them back. Um, there's a lot of weird shit going on, um, a lot of exploration and stuff. And so I went to a predominantly white middle school and I found myself wanting to fit in, but I also very much wanted to be myself. And so, I don't know, I... I had a hard time working through 
my identity. And I, I also had a lot of pressure from my family and um, just, just people around me to be a certain way. And so that culminated in an eating disorder um, at the end of middle school. And so I ended up losing a whole lot of weight. And I, I wanted to fit this idea of femininity that I just wasn't, it, it wasn't quite me and I wasn't comfortable in it. But, you know, I got the cute clothes, I got the dresses and all that shit. And I thought that would make me happy and it, it really didn't. Um, I, I just ended up really annoyed with myself. And so as I got older, I just, I just kind of forgot about that kind of shit. Like I, I didn't have, I didn't have time for it. I had a lot of <laughs> mental illness going on. Um, and I had a lot of school. I had like all through school, I had like a 4.1 GPA. And then I hit like junior year and I just fucking checked the fuck out. And I failed a whole bunch of classes and my GPA dropped to like a 3.0. So um, it was, who I had a hard fucking time then. Uh, and so I kind of forgot about anything to do really with sexuality and, and gender and stuff. I didn't, I didn't give a shit about that stuff. So when I hit 18, maybe 19, I started, you know, like I, I had gotten some of my shit straightened out and I was going back to questioning things again about gender. Um, I wasn't exposed to a whole lot of information. And so I assumed that it was only, you know, you're either a guy or a girl or somewhere in between. Um, because I, I did realize that gender was a spectrum, but I was only thinking in terms of the binary. Um, and so I assumed that maybe I could possibly be a trans guy. And that didn't, like the idea didn't, it just didn't feel comfortable to me. Um, I, I knew that femininity, like conventional femininity wasn't for me. I knew that. And so I, I assumed because, you know, there's only the two, uh, the only two ways you can go. God damn it. I'm going to turn these notifications off. God. And it's, it's fucking Diglett. He's, he's being like super like clingy today. What the fuck is up with this shit? I think he's really excited for me to come back home, but this is kind of annoying. So I was tackling these interesting thoughts that I was not interested in, you know, a prescribed set of roles, a prescribed set of rules that I needed to follow based on arbitrarily set like ideas about the genitalia that I was born with. I, I was tackling that where I was like, I don't like the idea of gender roles, but at the same time, my gender is I'm thinking that I'm not, not a girl. I'm thinking that this is, this femininity shit is not for me. It was difficult because at one side, I'm trying to break down the fucking like gender roles and binary. I'm, I'm just like not fucking interested in the binary. But on the other side, I am interested in finding a place for myself within gender identity. And so it's very hard to do when you only have the binary and the binary was not, it was not for me. And so I was thinking maybe I'm, I'm gender fluid. Maybe I, I just go back and forth sometimes. Maybe that's it. And that really wasn't it either. And I, I did a lot of thinking and it came down to not being interested and not connecting with the idea of gender roles, the idea of gender in general. I, it just, 
you know, there's things that just don't compute for you, things that you just don't connect to and just don't fucking get. That was definitely one of them for me. And so I learned about being non-binary. I learned about, um, you know, other genders than male and female and gender fluid, uh, things outside the binary. And that became more appealing to me uh, as time went on. And I, I learned more about all those different kinds of designations and stuff. And I don't know, it's weird because growing up, femininity wasn't entirely bad. It's hard to figure yourself out when there really isn't a whole lot of, you know, like peer reviewed and researched um, information on stuff like this. And you have to go find it on the internet. And that's not necessarily, you know, the most reliable. There's a lot of conflicting information from all sides. And it's just difficult to, to find yourself within all of this mess. It really is. Uh, and so I, I use the analogy of a hotel and I think it's um, pretty fitting because I am in a hotel right now. Uh, the designation of being female for me was not entirely uncomfortable, but it wasn't home, like a hotel. So here in this hotel, I have a lot of things that I don't necessarily need. So I have two beds. I don't need fucking two beds. I have a whole bunch of lamps that I don't need. I have, you know, there's a lot of accommodations that the hotel provides that I don't use because I don't, I don't need them. And then there are things that I desperately need in this hotel that they don't fucking accommodate for. So I can't cook for myself. And, and so I have to eat a whole lot of raw food and stuff. And so that kind of stuff, there are things within femininity that accommodate me that are comfortable, but it's not where I belong. And there are too many things that it doesn't, it doesn't provide for me. And well-being is like a huge part of it. And I don't, it's, it doesn't provide for me well-being. It doesn't provide for me like a feeling of satisfaction, a feeling of I belong here. And so, you know, at this hotel, it's, it's nice not to have to worry about paying for electricity and water. It's, it's nice to come back and someone's made my bed for me. Um, stuff like that's nice. And just like in femininity, because being convention conventionally female is mainstream. It's, it's nice not to have to tell people my pronouns because people just assume that I'm female. And so they just use she, her. So I don't have to worry about, hey, I'm sorry, it's not she, her, it's they, them. I don't have to worry about that if, you know, I just allow people to think I'm a woman. It's nice to go to a store and buy conventionally female clothes and no one looks at you funny. Those things are, are nice, but that's not me. As far as, as far as gender is concerned, I'm ready to check out of the hotel. I'm very fucking ready, but I'm not sure where home is. And I'm not even sure if I have a home, really. And that is a uncomfortable, uh, slightly scary thought. Uh, I've, I've been considering doing low dose tea for a while, low dose testosterone, but there'd be a lot of explaining I would need to do to a lot of people. I don't know if that was a good analogy using the hotel and checking out, but I, I honestly don't know where home is. And I'd, I'd like to find a place of comfort but I'm not sure if it exists. And so in all of this, I, I ask 
if you know anyone who's trans or questioning or non-binary, if they're, you know, going back and forth between things, they're saying that they're trans male, then they're moving to gender fluid, then they're moving to pan gender or, or anything like that, you know, if they're changing their mind too much for your taste, uh, please be patient with them because it's, it's a journey. It's very difficult to discern. It's not as easy as waking up one morning and figuring, oh shit, I'm a dude. It's not nearly that easy because you're, you're trying to navigate within yourself how you feel about gender along with society's idea about gender. And those things don't always necessarily match up. And so if you know anyone who is trans or non-binary or questioning, please be patient with them because it's hard. And if you are non-binary or trans or questioning, be patient with yourself because it's, it's, it's not easy. It's not fucking easy. I'll tell you that, especially for people who are non-binary. It's because there's defined patterns for being female and being male. Those things are very much laid out for us. Um, but being non-binary, not really so much. And so it's a search within yourself to find what is most comfortable for you. And I don't know, I wish you luck. Definitely wish you luck because finding a place where you belong in yourself is it's good times. So yeah, that's been kind of a stream of consciousness rant about how I came to identify as non-binary, agender, and I hope it helps someone. I'll talk to you beautiful people later.